power play. Three members of an away team do not beam back alone. The Enterprise picks up a distress call from a supposedly uninhabited moon, and Data determines that it comes from the Essex, a ship that disappeared over 200 years ago. There's a lot of storm activity on the planet, so without any further investigation, Picard says it's not worth going down to check out the remains of an old ship, and decides they should notify Starfleet that they have solved the mystery of Captain Schumar and the Essex. But Troy spoils his fun by saying she can sense someone down on the moon. The interference is too much for the transporters, so an away team takes a shuttle down in a pretty comical shot. They look like they must have had a lot of fun shooting this scene. The storm is also preventing them from communicating with the ship, and they end up going down in an equally comical shot. The shuttle crashes and they all die. The end. <laughs> I did like how they blew the door off after they landed. When they get out on the surface, Troy detects with her telepathic powers that Riker has injured his arm. <laughs> they see a huge weird storm approaching. And Troy says whoever sent the distress call is coming with it. O'Brien wants to beam down with a pattern enhancer that will let them transport through the magnetic interference. Jordy says he only has a 50-50 chance of survival. But O'Brien says he'll just boost the confinement beam. One of those casual ship enhancements that they just do all the time. It didn't seem to concern anybody, probably as much as it should, that he had a 50-50 chance of survival. But then again, he's not a main character. And of course it all works. And he even makes a joke once he gets down there. Nice spot for a picnic, sir. <laughs> O'Brien gives the others the equipment and tells them what to do, but then they all get struck by lightning. And then in an unexpected twist, they all end up getting impregnated just like Troy in The Child, which I thought was going to be very interesting considering O'Brien and Data were part of it this time. <laughs> Riker manages to get them all beamed back. They wake up in sickbay, Troy conveniently next to the only thing in the entire room that can be knocked over. Easy, Deanna. <laughs> <laughs> and after Riker references one of his past sexual escapades, Beverly says they're good to go. <laughs> what? what does he say? Ready for duty, sir. You sure, number one? It's not the first broken bone I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> As they head for the bridge, Picard grills them about the planet, and Data has a speech malfunction. Interpolate. Missing Data. Data suggests starting their scan at the South Pole. Riker says, nah, because that's not where the shipwreck is, but Data moves the ship around the planet anyway. And Troy tells Picard it seemed like the people on the planet were calling out to her to go to the South Pole. But she can't be more clear than that. Then Data, Troy, and O'Brien go rogue and start beating down everybody else. Riker confronts Data and gets his ass handed to him. Then Worf tries to zap Data, but gets his ass handed to him by O'Brien. Then Roe tries to zap O'Brien, but she does that huge over-telegraph thing that they always do and gets zapped instead. Riker orders controls transferred to engineering before he gets zapped too, which causes Data to throw a robot tantrum. And Troy, who may or may not be aware of what's happening, decides to just smack Picard in the back and knock him out. <laughs> You're telling me Patrick Stewart needed a stunt double to stumble into a padded wall? <laughs> Come on. When the others leave in the turbo lift, Riker resumes control from the bridge. They track the rogue team's communicators. So Worf and his security team run past a guy wearing pants. I'm just going to point out how weird it was to just see a guy wearing regular clothes on the ship, but the rogues managed to make it to 10 forward. Then Worf and his security force bust in and a whole shootout ensues. Some good stunts. Now I didn't realize that Phaser straight up blew people back so much. And Troy in particular goes on quite a shooting spree. Marina Sirtis probably requested that scene be written into the script. And the possessed crewmen seem immune to Phaser blasts. On the bridge, they try to get a transporter lock on the rogue team, but O'Brien disables it, along with everything except communicators, and he also manages to seal off 10 forward with a force field. Riker suggests blasting their way in and just shooting everyone with phasers and sorting it out later. Yeah. <laughs> Picard tells Beverly to look at their readings from when they beamed back to find anything unusual, which you would think they would have done anyway because of everything that's happened in this show so far. In 10 forward, Brent Spiner takes out all the stress Michael Dorn has been causing him for five seasons. <laughs> Attack me. While Troy tells Picard to move the ship to the south pole of the moon. He reluctantly agrees. Beverly has analyzed the transporter logs and finds that the rogue group was possessed by something down on the planet. She suggests that the pain from Riker's broken arm might have prevented him from being affected, and that pain might equally free the others. 
It was a little eerie how quickly everyone was able to come up with how to turn everyday stuff into weapons. Yeah, Rose suggests a plasma shock, whatever that is, and Jordy immediately devises a way to generate one. And after they force the beings out, Beverly has to find a way to contain them. Why is Beverly the one trying to come up with that solution? I don't know. Why was Beverly the one analyzing the transporter logs? I don't know. The rogue trio tell Worf to inform Picard about the wounded, and he gives away that they are immune to the phasers. Picard negotiates to have the injured hostages replaced with himself, and tells Riker to wait for an opportunity to gain an advantage. In 10 Forward, O'Brien and Keiko's marriage is going great. He tells her he knows who she is, and tells her to shut the baby up. So a typical Tuesday for (laughs) O'Brien. Picard goes to 10 Forward, where Troy tells him that she has been Captain Schumar of the Essex the whole time. And not just this episode, the entire show so far. (laughs) Huge twist, very well executed. I never suspected anything up to this point. Now they just got to figure out what they got possessed by. (laughs) Schumar says he doesn't want to hurt anyone, but his crew needs help escaping the moon. Their consciousness were trapped on the planet after the ship crashed, but he can't be more clear than that. But that was probably because he was possessing Troy. (laughs) And he says they took aggressive action because they knew Picard wouldn't believe them. And all they want is to finally rest. Ro and Jordy crawl through some tunnels to get access to 10 forward by briefly burning a hole through the ceiling with a laser. And Jordy shows he's still feeling sour towards Dr. Brahms. Get over it. (laughs) I hear you. This is what Starship designers call easy access. (sighs) They set up a scanner that somehow picks up a clear visual spectrum image and they start whispering even though they've already made a bunch of noise. Beverly's come up with a way to trap the energy beings, and Jordy says he'll be ready in another hour once he's programmed the plasma shock thing. Why wouldn't he program the thing with an entire team before die-harding up into the ship? (laughs) In 10 Forward, Worf relates Klingon possession legends to Picard. And Picard still seems skeptical about everything, even though he himself has been possessed by an energy being in the past. He says he is sure they are not who they say they are. And Data gets really angry at them and overacts considerably. Meanwhile, O'Brien shows that he understands how sex works while talking to Keiko. I gave you that. And I legit thought he was talking about the baby, but he's actually talking about a bracelet or something. Okay, that's what I was going to say. I also thought he was talking about the baby. (laughs) (laughs) He tries to kiss her, which freaks her out because that wasn't in the script. Whole Mini was just getting a little carried away. (laughs) Shumar says they're going to the South Pole because that's where the bridge of the Essex is, and they want to get the crew's remains for a proper burial. Picard says he won't cooperate if they don't release the hostages, and Data says he will kill someone if Picard doesn't cooperate. In the ceiling, Ro turns on the plasma shock, but only manages to hit Troy and O'Brien. What a well-executed plan. And Brent Spiner takes out all the stress Patrick Stewart has been causing him for five seasons. (laughs) Troy and O'Brien get repossessed, and the Enterprise gets to the South Pole where the magnetic storm blocks their scanners and transporters. The rogue team sends exact coordinates of their supposed remains, but Riker doesn't want to beam up random stuff without confirmation. And Picard tells them that only O'Brien knows how to push the right buttons to make the transporter signal get through the magnetic storm. Technically, couldn't they tell... (laughs) No, hear me out. (laughs) Couldn't they tell the computer to do whatever O'Brien does manually? Probably. I mean, they could just tell it to increase efficiency by 2%, and suddenly the ship would be able to do so much other stuff. They'll have to leave 10 forward to get to a transporter pad, and Picard offers to give them all free passage, but O'Brien would have to turn off his computer lockout. The trio each takes a hostage, and they head for the cargo bays. And when Picard tells Riker to let them go, he winks so hard it was audible. (laughs) Number one, I think we have an opportunity to end this siege. When they get to the cargo bay, Picard asks more questions about the detail of Schumer's plan. He asks how they will achieve the final rest they desire, and Schumer says that their energy beingness will fade as they distance themselves from the moon. And Picard asks, what is your scientific basis for that? And Schumer says, I don't need a scientific basis, and if there was ever a better summation of the approach to the writing of this show, I don't know what it is. (laughs) (laughs) And then Picard asks Schumer who he really is. Back on the bridge, Riker says the reason Picard chose Cargo Bay 4 is because they can blow the hatch if they have to. And my question was, just that Cargo Bay? No other Cargo Bays? What a great design. 
I said, uh, Riker orders Ro to be ready to open the cargo bay hatch if the writers can't come up with a solution in time. <laughs> Schumer reveals that they are actually prisoners sent to the moon, which is a penal colony, along with hundreds of others. They tried to escape on the Essex, but the storms ripped the ship apart, and now they're going to possess the bodies of the Enterprise and make their escape. The remains that they wanted beamed up were actually the other prisoners, and once they're on board, Beverly gets her containment field up. They try to use the hostages' lives as leverage, but Picard, Keiko, and Worf say they're all prepared to die. And Picard tells them that if they leave the crew's bodies, they will be transported back to the moon. Which they do. We close with everyone talking about their possession experience, and we see how terrible of an actor that kid already is. Could they have looked at the camera anymore? Which which kid are you talking about? The baby. (laughs) (laughs) Take some classes. I was hoping it was going to be a case where the baby was still possessed by one of the prisoners. He would turn to the camera and wink. Oh man, what a missed opportunity. Power play. Overall? Alright, here we go. (laughs) I mostly enjoyed this episode for about the first half. I didn't think the mystery was especially interesting because it was basically something we've seen before, but I thought the possessed people were telling the truth about who they were, and there would either be something later that would happen in the story to take it in a different direction, or things would just play out the way the possessed people wanted, and Picard would be wrong in his suspicions. I thought this because his suspicions didn't make a lot of sense, but Picard kept questioning things, and of course turned out to be right because he's the main protagonist. And in other episodes where he doesn't question anything, he's also right. Uh, yeah, I honestly thought this episode was going to be better than that. In the second half, I still liked the way the Possessed Trio tried to work around their restrictions and outthink the others, but when they had their big reveal at the end, it was such a huge letdown that just simplified everything to the point of not being interesting anymore, and then the episode was over. I kept waiting for Possessed O'Brien's conversations with Keiko to go somewhere, but they didn't. I thought maybe he was going to start getting taken over by the O'Brien side or something and turn good, which would have been pretty lame too. Yeah, I was going to say, you would complain about that too. Yeah, but it made me wonder what those scenes were even in there for then, if they didn't go anywhere. It was probably the writers saying, you know, we need to develop their relationship a little bit more. (laughs) (laughs) The character taking Data's place was way too over the top, and it didn't make sense that all the prisoners were allied with each other. Obviously, you've never broken out of prison. You put your differences aside, and you just get it done. Okay, well, I have a line here in my wrap-up that says, When we have prison breakouts, all the prisoners don't usually team up with each other. I get that they all wanted to get off the planet, but it was a little much. And then, of course, the rescue side of things with Beverly, Jordy, and Roe was just a bunch of made-up stuff with fake science and dumb technology stuff. (laughs) Plasma shocks and whatever, neutrino fields... I know somebody's going to say a neutrino field is a real thing, but I'm sure it's not going to hold energy beings in it. Because we have a lot of experience doing that, you know? (laughs) I do it all the time. I didn't think it was a terrible episode, but the ending in particular made it really disappointing. I gave it a C+. See, I like this one. It was that ending really dragged it down. I definitely would have been more in B range if it hadn't been for just so we were prisoners on the planet. That's all there is to it. I did originally give this one an A-. minus. Why? Was it was it seeing uh, Troy being so aggressive with everybody? Shooting people? Taking charge, yeah. <laughs> I thought the pacing was good. Everything was much more action-y than we've seen in a while. And most of the characters' thoughts and actions made sense for the most part, which is pretty rare. It was nice to see all of the characters use their skills, even if it was against each other. They are all very capable. And it's annoying in the episodes where one of them forgets how to do anything because the script says so. It bothered me that Picard was absolutely sure, right away, that the Rogue Team's story was false, because Starfleet officers shouldn't be acting like that. (laughs) I was on Worf's side that being a disembodied energy being for 200 years could make you go insane. And I had a lot of questions about Data's possession. It really didn't take advantage of being inside Data, because Data is very smart and has taken over the ship all by himself more than once already. Yeah, I thought about that. I thought it was going to use Data's android abilities to do something, and it did disable a force field at one point by breaking into a panel, but that was it. He did get a nice grip on Picard's neck. (laughs) I guess that's true. (laughs) It would have been nice if the rogue team had had a plausible explanation as to how they were the crew of the Essex instead of, I don't know how it happened. 
I didn't think I would like this one as much as I did. I'm surprised at my own grade. I was really hoping at the beginning for some kind of tie into the child. It would have been awesome. Would it? 